Hello and welcome to the SEC on ESPN. We're at the Pete Maravich Assembly Center, known as the PMAC, on the campus of LSU as the second-ranked Tigers host the ninth-ranked Alabama Crimson Tide. Let's take a look at the current standings in the conference. Both LSU and Alabama currently in the top four of the standings, which means they would compete in the evening session when we cover the SEC championships on March 23rd on the SEC Network. Hi, everybody. I'm Bart Connor, along with my fellow Olympian, Sam Peshik. And Sam, we're in a rockin' PMAC. There's nothing quite like competing down here. The energy in this building is infectious. Oh, my gosh. There's nothing like competing with a big, knowledgeable crowd that is so passionate about this sport. And then you add in two great teams like Alabama and LSU. Iron sharpens iron. We're in for a treat, Bart. All right. Both of these teams are coming off big accomplishments last week. Alabama had the tied for third highest program score, a 198.075. Season high on bars and a program best on floor, 49.75. Yeah, well, last week on the floor, every gymnast went 9-9 plus for the first time this season. So they've been getting better and consistent across the board. Luisa Blanco is even going to add difficulty to her routine this year. Gabby Gladio finishing with a 9-9-7-5. That means she got a perfect 10 from what Judge Bart. And LSU, even though in a losing effort against Florida, they had a season-best road team score just under 198. A huge score on the floor, 49-775, and they debuted at number two in the national rankings. Well, we already know that vault and floor, the leg events, have been a strength for LSU all season long. Aliyah Finnegan scoring two consecutive tens on floor. They're hoping for another one. They intentionally started slower this season to peak at the right time. And Bart, I think it's showing up in their results. Huge 49-775 to match the program high on floor. All right, and we'll have a chance to see them wrap that up tonight. Both of these teams superb on the floor. The last couple of rotations are going to be worth sticking around for. We start tonight's meet with LSU, the home team, getting a few notes from Jay Clark, the head coach in his fourth season. Six athletes you see in the lineup there will get the call to compete on vault. Remind people the meet format. Six athletes compete on each event. The best five scores out of those six count towards the team total. Team with the highest cumulative score wins. And of course, the home score is what's known as the Olympic order. Vault, uneven bars, balance beam, and floor exercise. First up for LSU is the high-flying KJ Johnson. She can really nail a big vault if she's on. Yeah, we were talking about their impressive floor score for last weekend, but they also had a season high on this event right here. Currently second in the country on vault with these explosive vaults. She's going to be doing a Yurchenko layout full. Looking for vertical tests on the landing. Very controlled. It wasn't a stick, but just as good as you can do it without dialing in that landing. Look how high she gets. She waits to twist. That's good technique right there. Just the smallest little slide on the landing. AJ Johnson, we'll see here on floor as well tonight. Super explosive young athlete. Here are the six athletes that will be on the bars for Alabama, including this outstanding all-arounder, Gabby Gladios, having a terrific year. Yeah, she's an athlete that I've really enjoyed watching and I think is going to continue to improve throughout her career. Does a nice job showing consistency, which is most likely why she's in this leadoff spot for Alabama. Beautiful pirouette. That half turn is what we want to see finishing on top of the bar. She did that nicely. Looking for those stuck landings. Oh! They nailed the first one, and I watched their warm-up, Bart. They <laughs> stuck almost everything. I think Alabama's dialed in today. Check this out. She does a full pirouette straight into that double back. No question marks on the landing. Wow. Good way to start in there. <laughs> Justin Spring with a wow. Justin, of course, the assistant coach there, former Olympian himself. This is always a highlight whenever Aaliyah Finnegan is on the screen. The junior from Missouri has had quite a year as well. 
Yeah, she's doing a Yurchenko one and a half. This is going to be only the third time she's done it this season. And just clean gymnastics. That's what we've been seeing across the board for Aaliyah Finnegan. Talk about the lineups have been changing here even in the last few minutes. But as of last week, Makari Duggett with a season ending leg injury not in the lineup and typically a very important contributor as a graduate student both in vault and bars for Alabama. Both of these teams have a lot of depth. So it's unfortunate we're not going to see her competing tonight because she has decided to take on the role of being a cheerleader. Yeah, she adds a lot gymnastically to this roster, especially on the uneven bars. But the coaches are quick to say just how much of an impact she has as a leader. They offered for her to drive separately in another car to be more comfortable, but she wanted to be with the team. Speaks volumes about her team first mentality. Both of these teams are very deep. Here is Chloe LaCourcière, the freshman. She is just beautiful lines, stretched positions on every skill here. Looking to get those vertical handstands. A difficult dismount and just that slight slide together at the end. Biggest deduction I saw in this routine. Corsier is coming after the 9-8 leadoff for Gladio. Very smooth release moves straight back up to that handstand. You want to see it in a vertical, but you have a 10 degree window. It looks like she still meets those requirements. So should be no deduction for that handstand. We'll go back and forth in this competition in a dual meet format. That brings up freshman Amari Drayton. The first two scores for LSU are both 9-8-7-5s for Johnson and Finnegan. She stuck this cold last week. You're taking a one and a half. Oh. You know, sometimes mm. when you try too hard to stick, you can actually under-rotate the vault, which is what we saw here. And she's just a freshman. Let's see what went wrong. Looks good. Her legs are still together. She can is spotting the ground. And you see her chest behind her heels. That's really where we want to see the chest vertical to help her body alignment stick on the mat. My expectations for Amari Drayton out of Spring, Texas. She trained with Simone Biles, who is a name that most fans who tune in gymnastics are familiar with, the great Olympic champion from the States. Maddie Wadagora now coming up after Chloe LaCourcière had a 9.875. So Alabama, as the visiting team, doing what they need to on bars with clean execution. They do, but when I spoke to head coach Ashley Johnson, she, she said, it's just a stick game. The lineups go 49-6 when they stick, 49-3. Oh. Oh. Mm. Man, that's what we call a finger tipper, Bart, and unfortunately. Oh. Let's take a look at what happened. Didn't get. Her dowel across the bar. The dowel is the piece in the grip to help you hang on to the bar and Ugh. didn't have enough stretch right there at the end. And it's uncharacteristic for Maddie. You mentioned the dowel on the grips. The eat gymnasts, as you can see there, wear leather hand guards. And right on the end, by where the fingers are, is a little dowel. It's about the size of a pencil. And it helps create a hook. And normally, if you get the dowel over the top of the bar on a release move like that, you can catch it securely. But she didn't quite get over the top. Yeah, and really unfortunate, because it looks like she's going to start the routine over again, which means she's already starting with that deduction. Oh. oh, this is strange. Now, normally when you fall, you get a half a point deduction and you continue your exercise from where you fell. Yeah, and I always say that I think bars is the most difficult event to have a fall on because rhythm and momentum during your routine is really important to regain after a fall. So, you know, if you fall on balance beam, Bart, you can get back up, do a pose, to center yourself. But on bars, you have to jump right back into the routine, which is tough to do. This is tough in the first rotation for the visiting Alabama Crimson Tide. They're going to need to be consistent tonight because LSU is virtually unbeatable at home, and they have a great team this year as well. 
Quick reminder how the dual meet format goes. Six athletes compete, you count just the best five scores. So inevitably, if the rest of the team can hit, this score would be dropped, and Alabama still has a chance to get a high score. There she goes. On bars. Definitely good distance away from the bar, and again, she's re-grasping, so curious if something feels abnormal for her there. Finishing double layout. You know, unfortunate considering how she warmed up. And just to put it in perspective, Bart, she got a 9.925 last weekend. Five times she's been in the lineup and three times we were 9.925, not so today. Okay, let's talk about what the judges are looking for in the vault, Sam. Yeah, they're looking for that start value. You want to see a 10.0 start value is the highest score you can get. Execution and, of course, the landing. Take a layout pull from Tay. She had a little trouble in the warm up trying to decide whether she would go for that one and a half, but looks like she played it safe with the bowl and it benefited them well to do a clean ball in that lineup. Talk about the depth on this team. Amari Drayton had a 9725 for Moher. Chase Brock has not seen a lot of action in the lineup this year because just as one of Jay Clark's deepest teams ever, 11 athletes that are either seniors or graduate students on this experienced LSU Tiger team. Shania Adams waiting on the score for Maddie Walagura. Let's take a look at what the judges will be focusing on. Yeah, the judges are looking for the vertical handstands, those release moves, good distance away from the bar, and of course the dismounts. You want to see clean shapes in the air and minimal deductions, hopefully a stuck landing. Now she's waiting for the judges to calculate. Now it's interesting because Walagora, she had a mistake and many times for the judges, it's harder to calculate a routine that has to be recalibrated based on what is the actual difficulty of it. Forget about the execution with the two falls. Yeah, it adds a little bit of difficulty for the judges and a lot of difficulty for the next competitor up because Shania is now having to wait a little bit longer. But what's interesting, and I think this is a positive actually for Alabama on bars, is head coach Ashley Johnson said that Shania does better when she's under pressure, when there's a lot on the line, and when she gets thrown in. So it feels like the perfect storm for Shania to rise to the occasion right now and moment where she's been able to do this in the past. Four times she's been in the lineup. There is Ashley Johnston, the head coach at Alabama. Four times Adams has been in the lineup this year. Last week had a 9.95. And once again, Alabama competing with without Makari Doggett, who typically is a consistent 9.9 plus on this event. Yeah, and Shania actually was the athlete that stepped in for Macquarie last weekend and scored a 9.95 on this event. So her career high is 9.975. Scores in for Walagora. It's an 8-4. Likely to score, they'll drop. But the rest of the lineup can hit. This is big. Clean form. Fighting that positioning on the pirouette just slightly. But, you know, what she's likely thinking is, I just have to make this routine. <laughs> and a stuck landing. Not too bad to get Alabama back on the right track here. She has such clean gymnastics. That giant full, full pier west on top of the bar is what we call it. Beautifully done into that double back. Back to the vault now for LSU. These last two vaulters are spectacular. This one is Kaya Johnson coming after Chase Brock had a 9875. The most difficult vault in NCAA, Yurchenko double. Oh. She stuck it last weekend. She was close here. I mean, it is so impressive. Look how fast she twists and is able to just drill it to the ground with almost no movement. Really impressive. We've seen her with a little cleaner form in previous competitions, but the most difficult vault being done in college gymnastics these days. And it's amazing. It's a young lady who came back from a torn Achilles, and she's still contributing in a major way.
Here are the scores for Alabama at this point. Shania Adams getting them back on track with the 9-8 after the 8 ball. 8-4. Here is Luisa Blanco, many-time All-American. Yeah, this is an important routine for her, and the last person in the lineup need to deliver here. And an athlete like Luisa is definitely capable, doing a nice job with her precision. It's really her specialty on this event to just place her skills in the right area. It was a hit routine. We've seen her drill the landing, not quite able to do that tonight. But look how sharp her skills are. Legs are glued together when she twists. And that handstand meter right on the line there. But still looks like she's in the 10 degrees. Anything 10 degrees or less would incur a no deduction for that handstand. Okay, LSU has yet to score 9-9 on vault. That's pretty rare. But look out for Haley Bryant. Yeah, she does a front pike half. This is worth a 10 start value. Oh, my. Interestingly enough, this is the only event she hasn't scored a 10 on this year. Front pike half. Man, it is so impressive just how high she gets off the air. Garrett. Off the table, rather. Garrett Griffith in the background there. Helps them with the vault effort. And, of course, his wife, Courtney McCool Griffith, helps them with many aspects of their program. Cameron Machado now, the senior, with a very important role now for Alabama. Because, remember, they're going to try to replace that 8.4. And whatever Machado gets, if it's above 8.4, will contribute to the team score. LSU with a solid 49-4-5 in that rotation on vault. Haley Bryant scores in. It's a 9-9-5. But LS Alabama needs a hit routine right now from Machado. Yeah, Bart, this is particularly important because we talk about that in QS and bettering the 197 score that they could drop. And it's really important that she makes this routine. Eight times she's been in the lineup this year with a season high, 9975. You hope that she's not thinking about any of that, though, and just taking one skill at a time. That's what's really important here. Looks like she's able to get it done for Alabama. A huge moment of relief for the Crimson Tide because they'll replace that 8-4 with obviously a solid score for that clean exercise from Machado. Yeah, great work for her to seal the deal here on that double back. And you can just see her face right there take a big, deep breath after she saluted. Okay, so we're off to a great start here. LSU is the home team, only got one score that was 9-9 plus, but we're going to break down the NQS, the national qualifying score, and we'll take a look at Alabama's NQS when we come back. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Back to the PMAC here in Baton Rouge. It's a packed house at this place that's always rocking for gymnastics, one of the toughest tickets in town for sure. LSU has the lead after the first of four rotations. Hi, everybody. I'm Bart Cron along with Sam Peshik. Now, Sam, as we mentioned at the top of the show, Beginning this week, the way they rank the teams and individuals is completely different. Isn't it? Yeah, they used to be ranked by average team scores, and now they're going to use a scoring system called the NQS, the National Qualifying Score. Let's take a breakdown on how that is put together. The NQS is used to determine the team or individual positions for the NCAA postseason. You identify the six highest scores. At least three of them have to be away scores. And then you drop the highest score and average the remaining five. So let's take a look at how this applies to Alabama tonight. So you're going to see Alabama's top six scores, three of which have to be away scores. Then you're going to cancel out the highest score whether it's home or away, and average the remaining five. Pretty easy when you look at it that way. So if you see the 197-125 score at the bottom, that's the score that Alabama is trying to beat tonight in order to improve their NQS. Currently by the NQS, Alabama ranked ninth in the country. This is a legacy program, and of course, Ashley Johnston 
former champion at Alabama, now in her second season as the head coach. She likes this underdog role for this team. She thinks they compete better that way. Yeah, she recognizes that because it's a legacy program, it's added pressure to this Alabama team. So she wants them to stay in the process of attacking the task at hand, and that's really how they compete on at their best, the offense versus playing defense. Currently, they trail LSU by a quarter of a point after the first of four rotations. Now, coming up in the next rotation, it'll be Alabama's Luisa Blanco on the vault. And for LSU, it's the indomitable Haley Bryant on the bars. Here is the meet summary at this point. LSU had four nine eight seven fives, didn't break through to the nine nines until Haley Bryant with her spectacular vault got a nine nine five in that first rotation. Hey, look at this. Sam Peshik, my broadcast partner here. I guess you go back a couple of years. Justin Spring, the assistant coach at Alabama, a member of that Olympic team. 2008 Olympic bronze medalist in those days. I guess you guys have been pals a long time. Yeah, Justin and I have known each other for forever, it seems like. He's been a big brother to me. So it's really cool seeing him be so passionate about this Alabama women's gymnastics team. He previously coached men. So it's been fun watching his transition in all facets of gymnastics. Justin Spring, Olympic medalist in his second year now coaching at Alabama. You're right. He coached for several years at Illinois, coached them to a national championship team for the men, and now has decided to switch over to gymnastics. Jamison Sears, gymnastics for the women's program. Jamison Sears now will lead off Alabama in the vault. Remember, they trail by a quarter of a point. I'm curious to see what she's vaulting. She's done a Yurchenko full and a Yurchenko one and a half so far this season. <laughs> wow, <laughs> looks like they picked the right one. Jamison Sears normally doing vault and floor for the Crimson Tide. She's just a freshman. You see that Yurchenko vault, the round off onto the springboard, backhand spring onto the table, perfectly done. You can tell she knows exactly where she is to just sink into the landing mat and hold it. She is just a bundle of energy from the moment she walks in the gym. She's never not moving. <laughs> Alexis Jeffrey will lead off for the home team on the bars. She's been doing a great job in this leadoff position for LSU. Great handstand work throughout this routine. And with Alexis, you just see clean Ooh. gymnastics. Wow. But that is why you can see Jay's face. <laughs> yeah, Jay Clark, he proud of the work that they've done on the bars over the years. I mean, check this out. Hard to see a little bit from this angle, but she pulled in, which means she's a little close to the bar. Look. You want to be further away from the bar, but look at Jay's face. He is so impressed that she was so cockeyed and able to find the landing. How yeah. impressive there. And she was uncomfortably close to yeah. the bar when she's, you know, over six feet in the air. Now, Lily Hudson, she's already had a big moment in her season. Got a perfect 10 earlier this season on ball. She's second up. Round off onto the board, back handspring onto the table, one and a half. Just had a little bit of energy, momentum, power, however you want to say that. Didn't quite absorb the landing at the end. The sophomore from Fleming Island, Florida. Once again, both of these teams are quite deep and they do have the flexibility of changing the lineup. So when someone like Makari Doggett goes out, it's heartbreaking for the team, yet they have other athletes that are 9-9 plus potential to step in. Alexis Jeffrey, a 9-8-7-5 in the leadoff spot. That brings up Ashley Cowan, second up. Yeah, 
good big release move combination to get things going. Very fast ball routine. Finishing double layout dismount. <laughs> and that is the landing they've been practicing in the gym. Of course, the judges are looking for the vertical handstand and release moves right here. She did two in a row to get her 10-0 start value, finishing double layout. <laughs> Great work adjusting to find the stick position, Bart. Feet together in that double layout is tricky. Not a lot of athletes can do that successfully. And she literally landed straight up and down. That yeah. is the focus they've been really kind of dialed in on landings because at the end of the day, handstands and landings make the difference in these meets where these teams are so evenly matched. Interesting opportunity here now for Corinne Banagan, the junior from New Jersey. This is her first event appearance on vault, first career appearance, and she's coming after Lily Hudson had a 9825. Jamison Sears led them off with a 9875. You know what's interesting and fun for me to watch is that vault, more than any other event, has strategy. So go with the Yurchenko one and a half that we're gonna see, or the safer Yurchenko fold. And it's been great to see a lot of these teams pushing the risk factor here. And it's not that risky when the one and a half looks as good as Corinne. Off center and a little leg separation. But first time out, not too bad. Good experience for Corinne Banaga. Alabama trailing by about three tenths of a point. As we move to Kaya Johnson on bars after Ashley Cowan, a career high 9925. Kaya is a really dynamic and powerful athlete, and she really brings that to uneven bars as well. I love how quickly she was able to get her legs together on top of the bar there. And this dismount, uh oh, I was gonna say is important. Head coach Jay Clark said she has a tendency to throw her arms over her head. Oh, I think it could be a good score. She has eight tens in her career. Never has she scored a 10 on bars. Yeah, she threw her arms over her head, which Jay doesn't like, but she was able to stick it, so maybe he'll let it slide this time. See what the judges do with that as she earns the coveted stick crown. And the LSU gymnast. Luisa Blanco now after Corinne Panagin got a 9775 in her first appearance on vault this year for the Crimson Tide. You're gonna be seeing a Yurchenko one and a half, what we call a blind landing. Oh, wow. Her career high is a 995. I'm not sure I've ever seen her do this vault better. Check it out. Finds the landing so solidly, so confidently. I'm interested to see what the judges are gonna do. This is what's happening at this point in the season. This is the ninth meet of the season. These teams now are dialing in landings and focused on the postseason opportunities, which include a shot at the national championship, of course. Alabama six times has won the national title, but LSU has never won it. Three times they've been runner-up. Is this the team that could do it? Connor McLean now after Kaya Johnson got a 9-9. Beautiful, you know, all of her skills are so textbook. The way she's able to hold her handstand position, really show them off to the judges. Finishing tuck full in. Oh. Little step on the landing. Head coach Jay Clark said that <laughs> athletes like Connor, they come in and in elite gymnastics, the focus is on difficulty, not sticking your landing. So it's really going back to the drawing board on how to create consistent movement patterns for them. Seven times she's been in the lineup. Just her second meet of her career at LSU got a 10 on the bars. Gabby Gladio, the sophomore at Alabama after Luisa Blanco got their high score 9-9. Yurchenko full, and she does a really good job of flaring her arms 
in the air. I actually wanted to see her flare the arms more. She's a powerful athlete, and when you have that power, you have to have something to stop your rotation, stop your momentum, and that's usually generated with the arms. Gladio's been in the all-around the last three meets with deceptive power, quite balanced on all of the events, nine, nine plus everywhere. Connor McLean had the second straight 9-9 for LSU on bars. This brings up Tori Tatum, who played a critical role last year after there was so much adversity for LSU with injuries. And she stepped in after Kaya Johnson was out to provide an important score week in and on week out. Yeah, there was a couple athletes fighting for this spot, so she really had to earn this position here in order to get the opportunity to compete. Does a nice job pushing down on the bar, trying to get those handstand positions. All right, her third time in the lineup this year. And great landing for Tori Tatum. Let's check it out. She's doing a tuck full in. And just a little movement from that left foot there. Usually after you have a little movement, you're like, oh, shoot, I could have stuck that. Chloe LaCourcier now. Gabby Gladio had a 9-8 before her. She stuck it in warm-up. Oh! Good fight. She was off-centered there. Again, it's a blind landing, so the air awareness is even more important on these one and a half vaults. You can see she's off centered because she landed outside the lines, but was able to minimize those deductions as much as possible. I think blind landing is kind of a confusing term for people who don't see a lot of gymnastics. She's just actually not seeing the floor in advance of landing on it, is she? Yeah, much more difficult than a full where you can spot it the entire time. Take a look at the landing here that Haley Bryant will go for. She does a double front with a half at the end. It gives her a chance to spot the landing before she puts her feet on it. Tatum had a 9.95 career high, a 10 from one judge and a 9.9 from the other. Those two scores are averaged. And Haley's gymnastics is just effortless to watch. She just floats to those handstand positions. I mean. Gymnasts across the nation wish they could do gymnastics like Haley Bryan. The consistency is mind boggling. Here's that landing. There you go. And she's just so solid. She has the difficulty. She has the execution. I mean, it's the total package for me. And she's so consistent, it's mind boggling. That's called a blind change to a double front with a half twist. She finishes way above the ground, which most athletes are not able to do. All right, after four nine nines in a row, LSU will get a big score for Haley Bryant. Now coming up, we're gonna celebrate the growth in women's NCAA gymnastics. It is incredible. You're watching the SE host the ninth ranked Alabama Crimson Tide. Here is the score. At the halfway point in this competition, LSU's Haley Bryant had a 9.975 and a season high on bars for LSU. Sam, let's take a minute to celebrate the incredible growth of college gymnastics in the United States. The attendance is up 37% since 2022. And of course, TV has made a huge commitment. 70 hours of coverage across all the ESPN networks in 2024. And of course, the NCAA championships are secured for the next 10 years as well. Well, the opportunities for athletes are also growing. Six programs have been added in the last two seasons. So that means now there's 87 programs. The ACC and Mountain West began sponsoring gymnastics just this year as well. And athlete excellence perhaps is the biggest brand. 98% of these young ladies graduate. Tied for the highest among NCAA women's sports. The community outreach is second to none as these young ladies on all school programs are involved in incredible, inspiring community service and universities are investing. They're investing in facilities, 
competition arenas and growth for these programs, it's really something to see. Everybody, I'm Mark Connor along with Sam Pesci. It was just a couple of years ago that you were competing at LSU, but could you have imagined this explosion, not only in the popularity in women's gymnastics, I know they have a long way to go, but the investment is also significant. Yeah, since I've been a student athlete, the growth has just been exponential. And we hear talk from these coaches that it's continuing that trend as well, which is really exciting. And I can speak as a former college athlete that these universities are really investing in the tools and resources to make sure these gymnasts are excelling in not just on the competition floor, but in life after sports. A lot of young ladies here see their heroes in the building, and there's so much more diversity and inclusion in women's college gymnastics. Glad to see it. Coming up, two of the big stars. Connor McLean will be on the beam for LSU, and Lily Hudson will be on the floor for Alabama when we return to the PMAC. Alabama Gymnastics was Dee Foster, 17-time All-American, four-time SEC champion, and 1990 NCAA All-Around, elected to the SEC Women's Legends class of 2024. And Dee Dee Foster will be honored during the SEC Women's Basketball Tournament, which you can catch it begins in Greensville, South Carolina. Catch every first, second, and quarterfinal game on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Coverage begins at 10.30 Eastern with the SEC Now crew. Okay, here is the meet summary. LSU has extended their lead to .675 as they go to the beam in this rotation, and Alabama coming off one of their highest scores in program history on the floor will go to the floor, so an opportunity for the Crimson Tide to climb back in this race. Can, uh, Sam, I think before the break, I said something about you going to LSU. <laughs> of course I meant UCLA, but you, there's a little bit of a bone to pick with Jay Clark, because he wanted you to come here, didn't he? Yeah, you know, I, I, I told him as he was walking by, I said, Jay, your uh, wish came true because Bart accidentally <laughs> said the wrong school on air. Of course, he recruited me when he was at Georgia prior, so I've had a, a great relationship with Jay for a long time now. I love joking around with him. He's hard to say no to. He's one of the he best is. recruiters he in really college is. gymnastics. At the time, of course, he was with Georgia, and they, of course, have a legendary program, 10 national championships. Jay hoping to bring the first NCAA title to LSU, which has three times been a runner-up in the last decade. Maybe the team that could do it this year. The great teams are Oklahoma, Cal. We've seen them all. Uh, UCLA. There's so many good teams this year. There's so much parity. But LSU has certainly the depth, more depth than they ever have, and their best shot at chance to win the championship. Yeah, I really think with all of the parity in gymnastics across the board, the winning teams are the ones that have the depth. You know, both schools that we're watching tonight, LSU and Alabama, have had pretty serious injuries, but they've also had athletes to seamlessly go in their place, and that's the key to a championship team. Another key to success is beam, of course. Many college meets come down to who can stay on the beam, and LSU, Sierra Ballard, really well known for her leadership in that leadoff role on beam. Yeah, she re she's reliable, and you're going to notice the way that she works beam is aggressive and attack mode and I believe that that produces that mentality produces the best beam work she just lands on the beam which is amazing and really beneficial to the rest of the beam lineup Ballard the senior from Mandeville Louisiana typically lead off on beam and floor for this team Round up one and a half. <laughs> Fighting for the stick position. <laughs> you know, last week, LSU had a phenomenal meet, but they played tight on this event right here. But you can tell just from the fight in this landing, they're going to bring it tonight. <laughs> LSU, three times this year at home, has been over 198, which is a huge score, a championship score. 
Alabama only once this year over 198, and it was last week in their dual meet with Georgia. They're trailing now by almost seven tenths of a point. But this is an outstanding event for Alabama and Maddie Malagora. We saw her struggle on bars in the last rotation, only scoring an 8-4, an opportunity for her here. Yeah, but head coach Ashley Johnson told us that this team is a comeback story, so it's almost fitting to their theme and narrative that they had a mistake early on, and they're trying to come back here, Bart. She's been in the lineup for the Crimson Tide on floor this year. Last week had her best score a Gymnastics. This will be thrilling. There's Sierra Brooks of Michigan. They're currently the seventh ranked team in the country. They will be taking on number one Oklahoma at the Lloyd Noble Center in Norman, Oklahoma, right after we're off the air here. This is number nine versus number two. So we have two top 10 matchups in NCAA gymnastics and three full hours of primetime coverage here on the ESPN network. Alexis Jeffrey coming up on beam now after Sierra Ballard, a predictable 9825. She just money in that spot. Yeah, she does a really good job getting them going in the right direction. But speaking to head coach Jay Clark, he mentioned them having a little bit of trouble in this two spot right here, mm -hmm. trying to find that consistent lineup person. And, Alexis is so solid and consistent on bars that they're really hoping she brings that here to the beam lineup as well. Nice, gentle backhand spring layout. You know, I think it's interesting to note that huge standing front tuck. The music is blaring right now. It is extremely loud in the PMAC. Usually teams turn the volume down a bit on balance beam, but not here at LSU. Oh! Little off center on the landing, but she is like a cat. I am so impressed that she can find the landing out of anything. Standing front tuck, very difficult. Not many people do that in the NCAA. Look, she's a little off-centered, but it doesn't matter with Alexis. She finds the landing no matter what. That is a key athlete you want in the position. She gets a couple of notes from Ashley Natt, the former All-American here at LSU. Jeffrey five times in the beam lineup, 995 two weeks ago. Now, Ella Burgess after Maddie Walagora got Alabama off to a great start with a 9-8-7-5 in this third of four rotations. Open double pike. Just a fun floor team. You can't help but smile with her infectious face throughout this routine. And it's her first year in the floor lineup as a fifth-year senior. Impressive.
from that last pass, but saves it. That'll be a deduction there, but saved herself the fall. Ella Burgess for Alabama. We normally see her on the beam lineup tonight in the floor. Connor McLean will be up next for LSU, and it was a little over a month ago against Missouri in a losing effort. She delivered a spectacular, almost magical beam routine to score a perfect 10 already two tens in her young career that was through four meets of the season already two tens big aspirations and expectations around Connor McLean and the future she could have in college gymnastics yeah I mean head coach Jay Clark gave such an amazing compliment to her not just as a gymnast but as a person he said there hasn't been any other freshman except maybe Katie Heenan, so gymnastics fans out there might remember standout Georgia gymnasts that have been as impactful as Connor as a freshman. Not only as an athlete and a contributor to scores, but already blossoming as a leader on this program as well. Yeah, they said that she's spoken up in key moments, even when the team didn't want to hear it. She felt comfortable voicing that. And you notice that every time she finished her skills, she finishes in high releve where her heels are off the beam. And that's just a textbook wolf jump, maybe the best in the entire country. the mark of a cool head because some gymnasts might panic and in fact overcorrect. Yeah, and I always say you want to adjust and not react. She did a nice job of that, but this is really oh. what is so outstanding is she's above that 180 mark on both of her leaps, difficult leap combination. And that's what's impressive to me about a lot of these LSU gymnasts is not only are they doing big gymnastics, but they're doing it with great execution as well. Jay Clark knows his team is in the driver's seat as the judges are conferring about the score for Ella Burgess in dual meet competition. There are two judges. They average the score between these two judges and these two judges came in at 9.45 and 9.75. That is a big difference between the scores. They're analyzing things like difficulty, combinations, connection. You mentioned the stumble towards the end of the routine. Yeah, she stumbled on the end of the routine, but you know, also the requirement is the leap combination. So did she get the leaps and the, the rotation all the way around to get credit for that? These are all the things that the judges look for in those routines. Sunday, we've got a women's basketball triple header at noon. Number one, South Carolina looks to remain undefeated as they square off with Tennessee at 2 Eastern. Number 17, Notre Dame hosts number 22, Louisville. And then we cap off the afternoon with Duke and North Carolina. You catch all the action on ESPN and streaming live on the ESPN app. Ella Burgess, we used to seeing her contribute on beam. Judge is still calibrating her score. There have been a lot of question marks about judging this year in college gymnastics. There have been a lot of inconsistencies and a lot of the focused fan base not exactly happy. Typically the scores have been sort of through the roof, but when it's hard to calibrate the score when there was a mistake. Yeah, it's, it's really tough. I think a lot of the times maybe the judges get caught up with how loud the arena is, how big the atmosphere is. And I know, Bart, you and I have had a lot of offline discussions <laughs> on what we think is going on here. But 
you know, it's good to see the level of gymnastics continuing to grow. So they're looking to find a scoring system that best supports it. And I'm not sure we've landed on it quite yet. I think you're exactly right. Now in the postseason at the conference <laughs> championships, they use four judges. They throw out the high and low and average two in the middle. By the time we get to the national championship, we even have a better system where there are six judges high and low thrown out and you average four scores in the middle so typically the teams that walk away with the national title are the right teams yeah I would a hundred percent agree with you Bart at the postseason it tends to even out a little bit Gam okay, Machado looks like they came up with a score for Ella Burgess it's a nine six so nine eight seven five was the leadoff score for Maddie Walagora from Pennsylvania eight times in the lineup on floor this year last week her best score of the season 995 and Alabama was lights out in their dual meet with Georgia on the floor one of their program best scores a week ago done. She's been so solid on floor this entire season. She starts off strong with a roundup back handspring double back. When I say a clean landing, that means both of her feet were planted and then she steps back for no deduction on the lunge. Kaya Johnson now in front of an adoring home crowd. You mentioned earlier that LSU was juggling with their lineup a bit. They were concerned about the number two spot. Well, today, Alexis Jeffrey got a 9-9 in that second spot. So LSU on track for another big team score here at home. After last week having their highest away score at Florida. Very powerful back handspring layout. You know, you talk about the question marks in that two spot. There is never any question mark about Kaya Johnson. In fact, you know, she flies under the radar because she is so predictable, according to the coaches. And that's what you want with athletes in the back half of your lineup. The only question you should have when these athletes go up is, are they going to get a 10 or not? Kaya Johnson herself. Eight tens in her career, two of them on balance beam. Most of her tens come on floor, where LSU will be in the final rotation tonight. Finishing round up double full. <laughs> she lifted just like Jay said that she does on those landings, but was able to hang on to it. Sometimes it's hard to stick when you have straight knees, but handspring layout quick to that finish position and check out the landing she stands up right away which sometimes indicates that she's going to move her feet but does a good job squeezing every bone in her body not to move in those crucial moments you're allowed to land with your feet slightly apart as long as you bring your heels together without moving the balls of your feet. Isn't that how the judges look for it? Yeah, that's how close your feet need to be. They don't need to land together, but you need to land and scoot those heels almost like. Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz. I was waiting for it, Bart. Thanks. All right, Lily Hudson. 
out of 10 this year. came on Walt and Beam twice this year, 995s on floor. And we talk often about LSU's brand of gymnastics. It's big. I think Alabama has always been big on floor. They have big, high-flying tumbling skills. Very impressive to the judges and the fans. Yeah, I really appreciate you know their performance quality and be able to do that big gymnastics you're referencing, but also controlling those landings, which sometimes is tough to do. currently ninth in the country in the national standings. Their highest ranking event is uneven bars. Only 15th on floor, but that's because they've shown a little bit of inconsistency. Last year, week, first time over 198, which is a championship level score for this team that has won many championships. Finishes, double back, had so much power. I wanted her to open up. You see that front feet, front foot slide back. That's going to be a deduction there at the end of her routine. I never experienced having too much power at the end of the routine. <laughs> Usually you're sucking wind, aren't you, Sam? Sometimes when you're tired, you just hang on a little longer. Maybe that's what happened with Lily. Here's Haley Bryant. Taya Johnson had a 9 8 7 5. This last half of the lineup, Johnson, Bryant, and Finnegan are otherworldly. Very light on the beam. You know, an athlete like Kaya is aggressive and sharp and quick to that finish. And Haley, on the other hand, is almost elegant the way that she lands, really soft on the beam. And that's the style that works for her. You can do any style you want. You want to pick the one that is most natural to you. 13 tens in her career. Oh. Good save there. She's gotten tens on every event. Won't get one tonight after that little bobble, but interestingly, the gymnastic community, they call that you get a 10 on every event, it's called a gym slam. She's done it, a career gym slam. And it's really because of those landings right there. She doesn't have many built-in deductions, meaning knee bends, flexed feet. She doesn't really have many of that. It's really these minor wobbles right there hanging on to it. Let's see one more time. Look at her toes. They're completely off the beam, and she's really utilizing her shoulders and her hips to stay on the beam there. Great work from Haley Bryant for that save. Standing front somersault. It's incredible athleticism and balance. Luisa Blanco coming after Lily Hudson had a 9.875. So the score that Alabama needs to replace is the 9.6 for Burgess. The two best all-rounders on the team, Blanco and Gladio, come up now. Yeah, watch this first pass bar. She's actually upgrading it. Front handspring, double full, punch run. That is so difficult to add a punch run out of a double twist. They actually said that it's easier for her because she has so much power that adding a front tuck is minimizing her deductions. I like the point you made there because these teams are so far into the season. They're literally fine-tuning routines, even changing skills or combinations to maximize scores. Yeah, and, and I think it's just impressive the fact that the, these some of these athletes are adding difficulty <laughs> to help them when they're fatigued. It's been a long season. Luisa Blanco is a fifth year. There's so many reasons it's impressive to me. Pass 
to finish things off. I mean, extremely difficult routine. Another job well done from Luisa Blanco. So she's going to do a front handspring, two twists into a punch front directly into that lunge position. And that's the final pass. More combination work, which I always found to be a little bit more challenging than the powerful skills. It requires a little bit more precision. Here is anchor competitor Aliyah Finnegan, who will compete for her mother's home country of the Philippines in the Olympics in Paris this summer. Coming after Haley Bryant, finessed her way to a 9925. Yeah, she's just such a natural beam worker. Check out this triple series. Hansburg layout, layout. Wow. It's the rhythm for me. It's the perfect amount of push from both of her feet into each layout. But mostly for Aaliyah, it's her arm position. So when she does her skills, I want you to look at her arms. You can see she puts them right out in front of her to help her balance. You want each arm to mirror each other to optimize your balance. quite adjust quick enough in the air on that front aerial. The brilliant all-around gymnast has been struggling with some wrist issues this year, so we're not seeing her in the uneven bars, therefore not the all-around. Perhaps we'll see her at the postseason in all four events for the LSU Tigers. Yeah, check out this triple series. Legs are straight. Toes are pointed all the way through. Perfect arm positions. Stunning. Gabby Gladio will be the anchor competitor for Alabama in this third of four rotations. Two nine eight seven fives for Hudson Walagora. And another 9875 comes in for Luisa Blanco. Watch how high she gets on this pass. Lots of difficulty. She doesn't even grab her legs. Most <laughs> gymnasts have to grab to help generate enough rotation, not Gabby. Sophomore with deceptive power. The coaching staff says she's kind of like a pogo stick. She just gets off the ground so quickly. I guess there's no substitute for quick twitch muscle fibers. There really isn't, and she clearly has that very naturally, but something that she has had to work on is the performance quality, but the coaches have been really impressed with how that's been improving throughout this season. defying gravity on those leaps and jumps, the tumbling passes, <laughs> really incredible. Amelia Hundley, the former Florida gymnast, congratulating her. She's on the coaching staff now at Alabama. Opens with that difficult two flips, one twist. You see that four inch mat, and that's not a deduction, just helps take away a little bit of the sting in the middle of the season, saving bodies. <laughs> All right, coming up, Sam and I will check out our news and notes around the conference and look at the SEC Gymnast of the Week and get you ready for number seven Michigan and number one Oklahoma when we come back to Baton Rouge.
Welcome back to the SEC on ESPN. We're at the PMAC as the second ranked LSU Tigers host the ninth ranked Alabama Crimson Tide. LSU in the driver's seat at home. I'm Bar Connor, joined by fellow Olympian Sam Peshek. Take a look at some of the headlines around the conference. Well, Florida clinches the share of the SEC regular season title, but they can win it outright at Kentucky on Sunday. Kentucky hosts Florida for the SEC title champs, and LSU at number two is first in the NQS rankings. Take a look at the athletes of the week in the conference. Leanne Wong is the gymnast of the week from the University of Florida. She's also training for the Olympics, so quick to grab this honor in college first. Specialist of the week, Shania Adams. We got to see her on the uneven bars earlier in this week. And lastly is Anya Pilgrim, University of Florida freshman of the week. We have been seeing her name week after week. Great to see this freshman having so much success this season. And coming up next, there's Reagan Smith for the Oklahoma Sooners, the number one team in the country, as they will host Gabby Wilson and the Michigan Wolverines from the Lloyd Noble Center in Norman, Oklahoma, immediately following this action here at LSU. The home team, the Tigers, in control with a 148 Five, five, and they go to an incredible event, the floor exercise, one of the finest teams in the country. And Shania Adams will be up for the Crimson Tide on beam, and it'll be Aaliyah Finnegan who scored two tens in her last two outings on the floor. She'll be up for Alabama last season against LSU. It was back-to-back -back tens. Alabama's 49-7 on balance beam was capped by back-to-back Ten by Lily Hudson and Luisa Blanco. First ten of Hudson's career, the third for Blanco. The first time in program history that Alabama has recorded two scores of ten on the same event in a single meet. They hope to replicate that tonight because right now they trail LSU by .725 and LSU is going to the floor where they're one of the finest teams in the country. Yeah, finest team. They're ranked number one in the country, Bart. And coming off their matching their program high on floor with a 49-7-7-5. I had a chance to speak with the floor coach, Courtney McCool-Griffith, and she just said they're intrinsically motivated, and that's the difference that's showing up this year. Each of these teams go through a journey throughout the year. There's the preseason, and then there's the early season meets with lots of excitement. There's a bit of a lull in the middle of the season, but the meets now all start really mattering. We're right now at the end of the regular season for the SEC, so all of these teams looking towards postseason opportunities. Alabama six times has won the national championship. Ten times they've won an SEC title. And here they are on beam now, trailing LSU by nearly three quarters of a point. They need some solid routines again. Yeah, well, win or lose, Alabama needs a road score here. So this event is really important for them. They've had some different athletes in this leadoff role. and. <laughs> they didn't ask me my opinion, but I really like Lily Hudson in this role because she is just so reliable. She's a steady athlete. She loves to compete. Shows up in her gymnastics, and she's one of those athletes that if there's a little mistake or she's going off balance, she does not react. She just responds and adjusts, and that's the really the requirement of what you want in this leadoff position. She had a 10-0 on vault early in the season, and we recapped her 10 last year versus LSU on this event. Finishing round up one and a half. You can see her mouth one, two. They're really working hard on holding those finish positions this year. Sam, you mentioned uh, 
this high away score could be really critical for Alabama tonight. Their away score they'd like to drop is that 197-125 to raise their NQS, their national qualifying score. So an opportunity tonight to improve their standings. With this road score, they need a 49-3 on beam in this fourth and final rotation. Meanwhile, Connor McLean and LSU are gonna run away with this at home. LSU virtually unbeatable here, and when it comes down to the floor, and nearly 13,000 fans in the house, it's showtime in Baton Rouge. Hey, it makes me want to get out there and do a floor at TNN. I don't say that often. Opening with a big double layout. can't say enough about this athlete's, not only her skill now, but her potential for future records in NCAA gymnastics. She has everything. She really does. The performance quality, no built-in deductions. I say that a lot. And I mean, straight knees, good technique, clean landing. She's got it all. Freshman, but her career high is a 9.975. Good save, not going out of bounds. Okay, Connor McLean leading off LSU on floor. She has power, she has grace, she has technique. Yeah, but look at her front foot here. She has so much power, she tries to hang on to it. And then check out this save. Combination pass, was going to step out of bounds. Nope, I'm gonna step right in front, so saving my team a one-tenth deduction. Good move. The mark of an experienced competitor. She eyeballed that line, went to the corner instead, and did not give up a deduction. These are the kind of things that'll matter when you get to the national championship, and they're in battles with teams like Oklahoma and others who don't give away many tenths of a point. Correct. Maddie Walagora now on beam. 9.85 was the leadoff score for Lily Hudson. this beam team throughout the week. And Bart, you talk about what's gonna matter in the postseason, and, and it's really not the skills on the apparatus anymore. They have worked on cleaning that up. It's the dismounts that you're about to see right now that make all the difference in who will be the national champions this year. Nice shot. Oh! And you can see her pull up the oops moment that they've been working on. Sunday, we've got a women's basketball triple header at noon. Number one, South Carolina looks to remain undefeated as they square off with Tennessee. At two Eastern, number 17, Notre Dame host number 22, Louisville. And then we cap the afternoon with Duke and North Carolina. Catch all the action on ESPN. Streaming live also on the ESPN app. Connor McLean outstanding in a leadoff effort for LSU, a 9-9-2-5. Amari Drayton, also a freshman with just unlimited potential. She shines on floor. Yeah, huge double layout. 
coaches say that she doesn't get all the pressing press clippings that Connor McLean gets, but she's got monster talent, as you can see from these monster tumbling passes. It's going to continue to develop. Three times she's been in the floor lineup every time, getting 9 9 2 5. Oh, there's a landing. or her teammates dancing with her on this side. <laughs> Just a freshman from Spring, Texas. She trained with Simone Biles, and look at the power. I heard her coach talking about the correction for her on this pass, and it's snapping down the back handspring in order to get the amount of lift she needs off the floor. She made that correction nicely in the meet. It's a spring-loaded floor. These days, it's almost like a trampoline, so it allows these athletes to do superbly high and explosive tumbling runs. Ella Burgess now. This is what she's known for, her work on the beam had a 2-9-8-5s for Alabama in the leadoff, Hudson and Walagora. So Alabama, although trailing, aggressive here on beam. And I think, you know, we talked to Ashley Johnston, the head coach, about what is their narrative? What is their brand? She mentioned we were going to be a, we're a comeback team. We like to be behind. And are you seeing things from the team that you're impressed with? Yeah, I think their ability to show resilience in tough moments, not having to count a fall on bars, and then responding here on balance beam, I'm seeing a really comprehensive effort from the athletes that are competing so well, and they look calm up there. You know, under pressure, a lot of teams might play tight, and that's really not what I'm seeing from this Alabama team. So it's good to see them be aggressive, and make the most out of this event. A lot of these athletes are upperclassmen and they know the importance of a strong road score right now. That's gonna be a big score. This comeback team after two losses to both Kentucky and Auburn, coming back with the philosophy of mudita, which is a Sanskrit term meaning sympathetic joy, seeing others' accomplishments. That's kind of the brand of all of college gymnastics in a way, isn't it? When you see all of these athletes cheering, and here's Makari Doggett, who is a symbol of that. She's now out with a season-ending injury, and yet she's assumed the role of kind of a inspirational leader. KJ Johnson, now watch her fly on floor. Huge. Oh. The most control I've seen on that landing for her. She's doing a really good job honing in on those landings. You can see we're sitting just over by the floor. She could have literally tumbled over our heads. Trying so hard not to move that front foot. 
twice this year. She scored nine nine fives, including last week. Yeah, and head coach Jay Clark said she doesn't ever think anything she does is good. And last weekend, she knew it. She went crazy, and this was a repeat of that. Huge, tough full in. I said not very many people do that in the NCAA when Gabby Gladio from Alabama did it. And someone from LSU, KJ, also does that. But again, it is pretty rare that we're seeing two athletes do it without holding their knees. Gabby Gladio, one of the four athletes, two from each team tonight competing in the all-around and all four events. Gladio has Two nine eights and a nine nine five was her high score on floor. Ella Burgess had a terrific nine nine five in that third spot. That's the momentum they need on this event. Makes me think back to their head coach, Ashley Johnston. I can't remember how many times when she was competing for Alabama, she needed a clutch beam routine late in the competition and delivered in just her second season as the head coach at Alabama. Trying to get this team back in the top of national rankings. And, and this is a really good beam team from Gaddy. I'm just seeing her improve and her confidence up on this event and her aggressiveness to those finished positions. That is what they yeah, needed. That's great. It's been an area of focus for them and really great to see that paying off over on balance beam. Three solid hit routines. Speaking of hit routines, Aaliyah Finnegan has scored tens in the last two weeks. One versus number 12, Auburn. The fifth of her career, and then last week at Florida, a 10, the sixth of her career, the fourth on floor. She's coming after KJ Johnson, got her high score, career high, 9975. The stage is set for another big score for Aaliyah Finnegan. Could it be three weeks in a row? Well, I asked Jay Clark, head coach, if she feels the pressure, because she's done two. And he said, we talk about not duplicating the outcome, but wanting to duplicate attributes that create outcomes. I thought that was interesting. Uh, <laughs> Magnificent on floor, but there's something about being in front of nearly 13,000 fans in the PMAC that gives all of these athletes at LSU a little extra energy. Outside of the line, otherwise a deduction. Wow. Shania Adams, you see her NQS on beam, as we mentioned earlier. NQS, the national qualifying score, is how they determine team and individual rankings as we head to the postseason. Great opportunity for Alabama to raise their team scores because look at what they've just done. Two 985s, a 995, and a 99. Handspring layout. Shania does 
does a good job with the upper half of her body, that posture, looking really tall and elegant on this event. But I'm wanting to see her absorb the beam more. Sometimes when you feel a little nervous on this event, you forget to hold those landings. She did a great job there. an event where Alabama has its most depth. We mentioned their NCAA titles. What's also unbelievably impressive is 23 times Alabama has been in the top three in NCAA rankings one of the iconic programs in all of women's sports, not just gymnastics. See Makari Doggett representing Mudita from the side, cheering her teammates on. This is Haley Bryant. Haley Bryant never below a 9-9, coming after Aaliyah Finnegan gets a 9-9-5 for finessing that landing, which is a good score. Check out this front pass. She's going to do a front handspring to a double front. Two flips in the air. Nicely done. I thought it was interesting. The coaches said that they started floor routine later in the season in order to peak at the right time and it's really working for them this year they've continued to improve on this event this year if you don't hold that finished position long enough. Look at how the attendance has grown. Dee Dee Bro was 43 years on the staff and built this incredible program now in the last four years. Jay Clark doing his best to try to bring home the first national team title. But they are here every home meet in the PMAC to cheer on this spectacular team. Meanwhile, Alabama had only two 9-9 scores or better through three rotations, and they have been outstanding on beam. Lowest scores, 9-8-5s, and two scores, 9-9 plus. 9-9 for Gladio and a 9-9-5 for Burgess. for Haley Bryant on the floor. It's her 14th of her career, third on floor, as Luisa Blanco, the 16-time All-American, needs to close it out for Alabama on beam. Shania Adams had a 9-8-7-5 before her. Yeah, an athlete that can do it is Luisa, but man, is it hard to stay focused when that many people in the crowd are cheering. I saw a little adjustment that could have been affected by the crowd noise, but really good job staying with this routine, staying focused. This landing is important. Oh, nice. Drilled it to the ground, and you can just see the excitement from head coach Ashley Johnson. 
for the way that Luisa was able to handle the challenging moment on beam just now. And once again, LSU over 198. And a 10 for Haley Bryant. They're on their feet here in the PMAC for this remarkable gymnast in her senior season. She can do no wrong here in Baton Rouge. And Sierra Ballard, we often see her in a leadoff spot tonight. They've given her the anchor role, even though LSU has secured the team win. Yeah, well, she actually wasn't even slated to be in lineup. It was Kaya Johnson, but my guess, we would double out. My guess is that they're trying to save as many bodies for the postseason as possible. And when you have athletes like Sierra Ballard ready to step in and deliver a strong floor rotation, why not? does not miss that opportunity. She dances so hard oh, on Lord. this routine. Get this, LSU has already matched a school record 49-775 on floor through five gymnasts, and they haven't yet calibrated in the score for Ballard. Man, when you do an exclamation point like this at the end of your floor routine, I mean, how is Jay Clark going to possibly decide floor lineup heading into the postseason? I don't know. The lowest score so far for LSU on floor is a 9-9-2-5, all the way up to a 10. Highlight tonight, of course, Haley Bryant once again. Her 14th 10 in her career, Sam. And it's just so impressive when she's able to do her gymnastics as easily as this. The power and aggressive nature, but she floats to the ground. It's so unique and it's so stunning to watch. So here is the meet summary. Number nine, Alabama visiting LSU tonight. Haley Bryant with a 39.85 in the all around, including that 10 on floor. That's the highest all around score this season. Gabby Gladio, 995 on floor, the fifth meet 99 high or higher for her. And the LSU Tigers, the fourth time over 198. Why does 198 matter? Well, that is a 99 average, and you need a 198 if you're going to contend for a national championship. Yeah, to me, a 198 means telling all the other teams in the country, you're gonna look out for me in the postseason, we're gonna be contenders. And LSU consistently is showing that week after week. LSU wins by a point, 198-325. What a thrilling night from the PMAC. Now we're gonna get you out to Norman and more gymnastics after the break. But for Sam Peshek and our entire crew, I'm Bar Connor. what a night. Closing me in the SEC regular season. LSU gets one more win at home. So long from Baton.